first thing that people think of when they hear the words Buffy is without a doubt <gasps> the hit TV show from the late 90s and early 2000s starring Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. But before that, there was Buffy the Vampire Slayer the movie, released in 1992 and starring Christy Swanson in the role of Buffy. This more hip and humorous approach to the Buffy legend sees local cheerleader and valley girl Buffy get approached by a mysterious old man played by Donald Sutherland, who informs her that she is the chosen one when it comes to killing the blood suckers of the night and that he must train her up so she can kill vampires. So Buffy goes from hanging out in shopping malls to hanging out in graveyards, killing the undead, where she makes a transition into a more thoughtful person with empathy and wisdom. But Buffy's biggest challenge lies ahead of her, where she must take on the head vampire Lofus, played by Rutger Hauer, and his henchman, Emil, played by Paul Rubens. Buffy teams up with local rebellious youth, Pike, played by Luke Perry, as the two try to save the valley from the vampires once and for all. I think that for a good long while, the common consensus seemed to have been that because Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV show was so damn good and really popular, then the movie that came before it must have sucked. I mean, I don't think that that's the common consensus now because I think in recent years people have gone back and watched it and realised that it is actually pretty good and I think it has gotten more of a cult following now. But yeah, I think back in the day when the TV show was in its heyday, the movie did tend to get a bit shrugged off. Well, today we are going to see if that was deserved and to see if the movie can stand on its own and has its own merit and enjoyability as we look into 10 amazing facts about the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. A countdown that we can really sink our teeth into. So, let's check it out. Come with me now to the graveyard while there's still time. Time to do what? Time to stop the killing. Number 10, Buffy was invented by a modern storytelling marvel. Although these days writer and director Joss Whedon is a well-known master of his craft, having been involved with many big recent franchises such as The Avengers, Justice League, The Cabin in the Woods, and Firefly, among others, back in the humble days of 1991, the fresh-faced Whedon wrote the script for the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. In fact, Buffy was entirely his concept and creation. And given Whedon's history of writing comic book characters, you can see a strong comic book element in the script of Buffy. And even after the release of Buffy, Whedon wasn't done with the character yet, as he would go on to create the Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series, which ran from 1997 to 2003, which turned his creation into a household name. Number 9. Vampires, Valley Girls, and Country Music. The movie was produced by the least unlikeliest person you can imagine producing a movie about a teenage vampire killer. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was produced by Dolly Parton. Well, technically it was produced by the country singer's production company, Sand Dollar. So, yeah, the next time you watch the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, just remember that Dolly Parton and her amazing hair and lovely country western voice oversaw the whole project and helped to get the movie off the ground. I honestly think it's a shame that she didn't have a cameo in the movie. <laughs> okay, I'll admit it. I don't know who she could possibly be or how we could fit Dolly Parton into a movie about valley girls and vampires, but hey, we could at least try. Number 8. Drastic Character Changes Paul Rubin's vampire henchman character Emil was going to be a female vampire, but the actress who was set to play the part, Joan Chen, left the project. So who do you get if you can't use the actress from serious and intense roles such as The Last Emperor, Twin Peaks, and Wild Sin? 
Why do you get Pee Wee Herman, of course? <laughs> Obvious choice. Also, Buffy's mentor, Merrick Jameson Smythe, wasn't originally meant to die due to being killed off by the head vampire Lofos, but he was in fact going to kill himself in order to prevent himself from turning into a vampire. But that was probably considered a little too dark, considering the movie's more playful tone. And in addition to that, the movie was to end with Buffy burning down the high school gym to destroy all the vampires. Sheesh, the original script sounds like it was going to be pretty badass. I don't know, I got the feeling that Joss Whedon's original vision of Buffy was way more badass and that the character was really toned down to be more comical and possibly commercial. Number 7, 90210 changed everything. <laughs> At the time Buffy the Vampire Slayer was in early production, teenage drama series Beverly Hills 90210 was hugely popular with the teen demographic, and the show's most popular star was none other than Luke Perry. So the production team of Buffy were eager to cast Perry in the role as Buffy's love interest, Pike. But in order to do this, the whole movie's production had to accommodate for Perry and his 90210 commitments. For example, due to him starring in the popular teen drama meant that Buffy the Vampire Slayer's production was cut down to a measly five weeks in order to fit around Perry's 90210 commitments. And yeah, five weeks is probably way too short and probably caused things to be rushed. In fact, despite the fact that Buffy the Vampire Slayer had some truly great talented actors starring in it, I can't help but feel like they really wanted to capitalise on the fact that Luke Perry was starring in the movie. After all, just look at the trailer. It has a voiceover by Perry himself, making it sound like the movie is all about him and his story. I just met this girl named Buffy. I'm Pike. Pike isn't a name, it's a fish. I liked her even though she seemed kind of flaky. Yeah. The movie's called Buffy the Vampire Slayer, not Pike the scruffy kid who hangs out in a van. As we all know, in 2019, Luke Perry passed away, and it's a shame because he actually was a good actor, more than he got credit for. Just watch the extremely underrated movie 8 Seconds and you'll see just how talented the guy was. A few years ago, I watched a couple of episodes of that truly bizarre Archie TV show Riverdale. Yeah, I think I was a bit too old for it, as it seems to be for younger adults. But it starred Luke Perry as Archie's dad, Fred. And he was just so kind and caring and humble in it. It was almost heartbreaking, especially knowing that he literally filmed his scenes till the very end. Rest in peace, Luke Perry. Number six, famous cameos. Buffy the Vampire Slayer's movie actually has a ton of cameos from either famous or going to be famous people, including Hilary Swank, David Arquette, Slash, Thomas Jane, Alexis Arquette, Ricky Lake, and Seth Green, who would go on to star in the rebooted Buffy the TV series as well. However, the most interesting cameo, and the one that is talked about the most, features Ben Affleck, who plays a high school basketball player. Yep, long before he suited up for Batman, he was facing a different kind of bat creature, as he had a brief scene as a big head jock, who didn't want anything to do with playing basketball with a bloodsucker. Can't really blame him, really, can you? Number five, the cameos that didn't make it. So with all these famous faces showing up in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, there were two famous faces that were going to appear, but sadly it didn't end up happening. As the movie was to feature Mick Jagger and David Bowie, who were going to turn up playing old rocker vampires. This wouldn't have been the first time the duo partnered up in the name of entertainment, as seven years earlier, Jagger and Bowie teamed up for the hit 1980s rendition of Dancing in the Street. However, due to budget constraints, this awesome vampire combo never took place. I mean, David Bowie was already pretty creepy as the Goblin King, just imagine how much of a creepy vampire he could have made. In fact, he already was a vampire in the 1983 movie, The Hunger, and yes, he was pretty creepy. And sympathetic. Number four, potential Buffy. So as we all know, when Buffy became a pop cultural sensation, the part was played by Sarah Michelle Gellar. But long before Gellar got the part, Buffy was played by Christy Swanson, who at the time was probably best known for her cameo in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and she would go on to have further success when she starred as Diana Palmer in the Phantom movie. 
However, before Swanson was cast as the rebellious teenager, Alyssa Milano was considered for the part and auditioned, but didn't end up getting the role. However, she would go on to have her own brush of teenage supernatural drama as she would go on to star in the TV show Charmed, a show about sisters discovering that they are witches, which incidentally was shown around about the same time as the Buffy TV series and was equally popular. Number three, the movie wasn't that much of a box office dud. It is popular belief that the movie was an utter failure and totally tanked with both critics and audiences, and was generally a financial stinker. The easy to shrug off approach of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie is probably fueled on even more by the hugely popular TV series which would follow. Because it became such a phenomenon, the popularity of that show totally overshadowed the original movie. However, that's not necessarily entirely the case, as the movie actually did pretty good in the box office. Well, okay, in a modest sense, as it made $16.6 million on a budget of $7 million. So it did double its budget. And keep in mind that this came out at a time when no one knew what Buffy the Vampire Slayer is, unlike now where everyone knows. Supposedly, back in the day when some people heard the movie's title, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, they just couldn't get over it and thought that it sounded weird and silly and just didn't roll off the tongue right. Buffy the what? Sl vampire what? Nope. Back in those simpler times, Buffy was a new, fresh-faced franchise that no one had heard of before. Buffy the what? And it seems that many people did indeed head to the local theatres to see Buffy in action. Buffy the what? Number two, movie poster switch. So just before Buffy was released, this teaser poster came out to entice potential viewers and I really like this poster as it perfectly sums up the movie and shows you that this is a valley girl who is going to be heading out and killing vampires and it's visually interesting too. However, when the movie finally came out, this is the poster that accompanied its release. Yup, just Christy Swanson and Luke Perry with nothing but a white background. Woo hoo. Pretty exciting stuff, right? Just wait here while I go get the party poppers. I mean, when you compare it to the posters of similar movies that came out before, such as Fright Night and Teen Wolf, you can really see just how bland this poster is. It really bugs me how Luke Perry is peeking out there. It's like he just had to remind us that he's in the movie. Like the poster is saying, hey guys, look, that dude from 90210 is in the movie. <laughs> It's like they didn't have enough confidence to just focus on Swanson, and that's a shame, I mean after all it is her movie. But I digress, it's not an awful poster and I would still hang it on my wall. The poster got an update with this recent Blu-ray release, which is okay, but I feel like it's trying to look like the TV series. And yes, Luke Perry is still there, with a look on his face as if to say, yep, I'm still around, you haven't gotten rid of me yet. It'll be nice to have a Buffy movie poster that doesn't feature Luke Perry growing out of Christy Swanson's hip. There's a sentence. Number one, Joss Whedon wasn't happy with the movie. When Buffy the Vampire Slayer came out in July 1992, it sadly got mixed reviews from the critics, who weren't in the mood for teenage vampire shenanigans back in the day, with critics not being pleased with the movie's plot and storytelling. But some of the cast performances were praised, one of whom being Christy Swanson herself. And the movie currently holds a very undeserved 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. Seriously! I mean, do people really hate the movie that much? I mean, 36%? But regardless, it seems that someone who was equally unimpressed with the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie was Joss Whedon himself. He felt that the way that the character was represented on screen just didn't match his original image of the character, the way that he had created her. In addition to that, 20th Century Fox made several changes to the script in order to make it less dark and more humorous. He didn't even break a nail. He even supposedly left the position of advisor during the movie's production as he was so unhappy with how the movie was turning out. There is also fan speculation that Whedon wasn't too keen on the more comedic turn the movie took. So hence, when he returned to write the series in the late 90s, he made it darker with more in-depth characters. 
But you know, that's actually a good thing too. It's nice to know that a creator was so unimpressed with his creation, rather than just abandoning it, he went back and actually tried to fix it. And to be fair, it worked. He made it something spectacular. So I do like the idea that he actually went back to fix his creation and make it more like how he originally saw it. Also during the making of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, Whedon apparently wasn't a fan of Donald Sutherland, as he felt that he was too difficult to work with, on the account that he kept wanting to change the script and improvise his own dialogue. I couldn't bring myself to say I was making a film called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Which apparently led to some of his scenes making no sense. But... You know, either way, I personally love the movie and will always have a soft spot for it. Now, I do have the advantage of watching it before the TV show, but it is what it is. So, yeah, there's that. This is a film I actually really, really enjoy and will still go back and watch every now and then. The trick is to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer as its own thing and to not compare it to the subsequent TV series that followed as it is a fun, enjoyable movie. Okay, it's not a masterpiece, but it's a good piece of early 90s pop culture fun. And this really is a time capsule of the early 90s. This has early 90s stamped all over it. I class it in the same category as the 1985 movie Teen Wolf, in that it's a coming of age teen comedy with a supernatural twist with comic tropes and elements. And yes, whenever I watch the Buffy movie, I always seem to enjoy myself. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm off to give the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie another viewing and not compare it to the TV show. See ya!